this is not good. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft and welcome to my basement and to my nightmare. As you see behind me, this is one of my foundation walls and it has a real bad crack in it. This past week, I took care of a task that has been on my to-do list since I bought this house about six years ago and that's demolishing the really disgusting, rotten, finished basement that was down here. It was drywalled in like the 70s. It was gross. It was hiding a lot of nasty stuff. Now, I knew going into this that there would be some foundation problems. That was evidenced in other areas of the house. I knew this. I was up for it. I didn't expect it to be this bad. Where I live, houses shifting, foundation problems, they're just kind of part of the deal here, especially on older homes. We are built on a clay bed and that clay expands and contracts like crazy. So old houses that weren't built on piles, they move, they crack. The hydrostatic pressure from the clay can cause stuff like this. And every house is a bit of a gamble if you can't see that foundation when you bought it. Anyway, this sucks. This is going to be a really expensive problem to fix. It's one of the few things in a house that I can't fix myself. I have to hire somebody else to do it. I can't even get it quoted yet because I first actually have to hire an engineer to come out, assess it, do drawings, stamp them. Then I can get the work quoted on and the permits and all that other stuff. And it, it sucks. But rather than letting this situation last week really get me down, I decided to turn it around and use it as some inspiration. My crumbling foundation gave me the idea to finally build some modern concrete ruins. And this has been one of the most requested things on this channel is venturing out from medieval fantasy and into a modern or post-apocalyptic setting. And this is the perfect project to start in that style. This was kind of a prototype project, but they turned out better than I thought they would. I kind of actually really love them. I'm gonna use them in Kill Team, but they can be used for all sorts of other things. I'm gonna hopefully build a bunch more. So let's move on from this and move on to building something cool. Using half inch XPS foam, I set about freehand cutting approximate shapes of the ruined walls. I made sure to create true 90 degree corners on two sides of each piece, a flat bottom and a side so that two pieces could be joined together to create the corner of a building. Making everything as a corner provided a lot of stability while remaining very modular. To easily create the look of modern formed concrete that had been severely damaged, I aggressively broke up the edges using a combination of an X-Acto knife, sculpting tool, and a wire brush. As with most foam carving techniques, it's a little bit tricky to explain and it takes a bit of trial and error to get a system that looks right and is easy to replicate over many pieces. In general, I found there was a lot of leeway with what looked right here, so I would consider this a very, very easy to do task. While the faces of the walls needed to stay mostly flat to represent concrete, I wanted some texture to imply damage and to provide a variety of different textures for washes and paints to enhance. I found that if I used a wire brush to push into the foam, it created a really great pockmarked look that did a really good job of mimicking concrete that had had its outer flat surface damaged, revealing the aggregate within. The trick here was to not drag the brush and create lines. I essentially just stabbed the foam repeatedly with the wire brush. I hot glued together the pieces to create corners. And in order to blend the joint on the corners without messing around with filler, I simply carved out more damage with a knife and added more wire brush texture. This really helped to unify the two pieces. I needed some form of base for these to make them more durable. Quarter inch MDF or EPVC would have been the most durable solution here, 
but at the cost of adding a lot of visible thickness that I'm not really a fan of. I opted to simply use medium weight chipboard. This stuff is not nearly as durable and it requires some special considerations during painting to avoid warping, but the trade-off is being able to do everything with just a knife and not adding much thickness to the bases. Because these were all L-shaped pieces and mostly covered by the rigid foam, as long as I was cautious during the painting to not saturate the chipboard, warping wouldn't be that much of an issue. After gluing the walls to the bases, I immediately used my Mod Podge mix to seal the chipboard. I added some rubble to the bases at the same time using a combination of foam offcuts, decorative stone, and sand. After that, I coated the rest of the foam with my usual Mod Podge mixture. And you can see here that it's a lot more gray than usual. And that's because I had just mixed a fresh batch and didn't end up putting as much black paint in it as I usually do. This perfectly demonstrates that the ratio is pretty inconsequential. And what's interesting is that after it dries and the Mod Podge portion goes from white to clear, the pieces will actually end up becoming black. Once that was dry enough to handle, I coated the underside of the chipboard with the Mod Podge. This step was really important. It sealed the chipboard so that the washes later didn't hydrate and swell the material. I knew these would need something to represent rebar to really make the pieces look cool. From my collection of bits, simple paper clips seemed like the best option. Painting thin round strips of metal can be quite difficult, so I thought ahead here and straightened out a bunch of the clips so I could place them in a piece of foam, take them outside to prime them with an aerosol primer that would bond well to the metal and make painting easier later. Fun tidbit here, you'll notice I'm spraying this right on a piece of raw foam and the foam isn't melting. This isn't special spray paint. Paint. It's simply one that is less aggressive with its solvents and by spraying at a proper distance it allows the propellants to dissipate before the paint hits the foam. So yes, you can spray paint foam, it just requires some care and testing first. I decided to also spray out the actual pieces as the flat grey primer would be a perfect starting point for painting the concrete. Attaching the rebar to the piece was really easy. I just dabbed the wire in a bit of tacky glue and impaled the foam. I could then clip away the excess at any point I wanted. I wasn't going for a super realistic rebar layout here, but I was a bit mindful of the fact that rebar is placed in a crisscross pattern, so I had some that projected both vertically and horizontally, but definitely with less frequency than you would see in real life. The trick to making it look cool was to make sure it was bent in different directions and that it traveled through any openings in the walls. In order to make some parts of the rebar still look like they were tied together, I used the super glue and baking soda technique to kind of weld the joints. And I decided I wanted some parts where there were still small bits of concrete attached to the rebar and kind of floating above the wall. This type of detail is what makes the finished pieces look way more interesting. To do this, I actually just super glued bits of foam to the wires. And yes, super glue will melt foam, but by acting quickly and adding some baking soda to it, it actually created a really strong and hardened bond, which was important for such a small, tiny little soft piece of foam. The paint job on these was incredibly simple. I wanted something that was easy to replicate over and over again in the future as I added more pieces to the collection. With the gray primer in place, I did a coat of suede or any kind of light tan would work. This wasn't a full coverage coating, more of a really heavy handed dry brushing that still left the gray primer visible in the low spots. 
I followed that by a dry brushing of an off white on all the highest points. This simply highlighted the edges. I painted out the rebar with burnt sienna. This color was perfectly serviceable as rusted metal and was very close in color to rebar that is left exposed to the elements. I followed that by a light stippling of a gunmetal metallic. If I was being truly realistic here, it probably would have been better just to leave the rebar completely rusted. But having a bit of metal show through to me seems to better imply the material on the tabletop. It's a matter of implication being more important than realism. This is a methodology I tend to gravitate to, much to the chagrin of all the armchair YouTube scientists. If this bothers you, well, you can paint yours however you would like. I gave everything a coating of my homemade black wash to dirty these things up and get in all the nooks and crannies and add more depth. I also used some drips of brown wash to create some subtle streaking. Before the wash was dry, I used a damp brush to wick away all the excess wash that had gathered in mass on the lower portions of the pieces. Once the wash was dry, I added one finishing touch of some rust streaks running off of the rebar. I experimented with a few different products that I had on hand to see what gave me the look I was after and ended up finding that the transparent rust from Mission Models gave me the look that I liked best. If you want to dig deeper into my testing of these different products, the Reviews Day video this past Tuesday focuses specifically on that aspect of this build. I've avoided any sort of modern or futuristic terrain for a really long time, but I'm really excited to finally be venturing into this territory. This build was essentially a prototype test and I really love the way it turned out. Now I just wanna build a ton of stuff using this method to populate a table for Kill Team. These ruins are pretty generic, so they could work for any number of games set in a modern or futuristic setting, and I'm really thrilled to open up a whole new world of build options outside of medieval fantasy. Don't worry though, fantasy will always be my main focus here on the channel, I just might play around in the post-apocalyptic setting from time to time. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your own projects, you can do so in a way that ensures you get the right stuff and help out the channel for free in the process. If you head over to my essential equipment page on blackmagiccraft.ca, I have explanations and links to all of the stuff that I use and recommend. Purchasing through those affiliate links helps fund this channel at no extra cost to you. If you enjoy my work and you get value out of this channel, a more direct way you can help it grow is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. It's through the generosity of people there that I am able to pursue my passion and share it with the community and hopefully help make it grow more and more as more people find this wonderful hobby. There you have it guys, another project complete. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section below. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit subscribe and check out my back catalog of other videos. If the project didn't inspire you to build something, I hope the way I took a really crappy personal situation and turned it into a creative inspiration helps you and maybe help with whatever crap life has dealt you this week because we all know life can deal you some crap. But thankfully, we got a wonderful hobby and an awesome community to help us deal with those stresses. And by God, it has helped me this week. Anyways, that's it for this week, guys. Cheers, I will see you again next week.